good morning, y'all. I have to tell y'all when my son, and he ain't even here today, he's going to hear from me. Uh, my son found out I was preaching, and he said, um, Mom, you think you can be a little light this time? I said, well, you know, it wasn't me. God gives us what we need, right, Shaka? Yeah. All right, hopefully this is not directed towards you this Sunday. <laughs> If it is, uh, at least you prepare. At least you know it's coming and you'll be prepared. But I, I truly believe that God gives us what we need when we need it. And as God prepares me to preach, it's usually something for me first. Um, God is always dealing with us. And if it's not, well, that's not going to sound like you. After the storm, I get the calls and you always going on, and then you know, thought the, thought the storm was raging in my life, and we got another gust of wind and started moving. And but you know what I, I learned when you get in situations, and it just looks like okay, this is truly not going my way. God, He was like, well, God, where are you? These people are weird, and they're making all these And I just stopped. And I just just came in. It's like, in the name of Jesus. And people were talking and talking about me and talking about my life. And all I could say was, Lord, shut them up in the name of Jesus. Not thinking that I did. So I set my little self back down. And the next thing I knew, things started taking a turn in my favor. It wasn't what I had planned to happen, but it was in my favor from where we started to begin. If we would just realize, I mean, we sing the song, there's power in the name of Jesus. But how many of us believe that? Believe that. And not only believe it, but exercise it. We, we think we're powerless, but we're not. Me and Janice were talking, and she was saying, that we just don't realize the power that we within us. God is within us. It's not something we got to go grab. We just call on the name of Jesus. How sweet is his name as we <laughs> sung this morning. Okay. All right. So let's get to uh, this morning. Now, before I, I, I begin with our, our passage, I need to do a little preliminary work for us. Now, we've all heard a failure to plan is a plan to fail. So we know that planning is important. But what is a plan? A plan is a, is a method for us thinking out our acts and purposes beforehand. We act or it's an act or a course of action that we take to achieve a purpose or a goal. So we know the world plan is important. We all plan. We plan at work. We plan all these other things. And people are always talking about a strategic plan. And everybody has a plan. There's a disaster plan, an emergency plan, all these plans. But do we as Christians plan? We often fail to plan. But how should we plan? And Gina, I hope you don't mind it, but talking about planning. Now, Gina is the only person I know that can plan. I don't know how many of y'all know it, but before she took her trip, Gina had been planning that trip for a whole year, probably before that. And she's the only person I know that plans Black Friday. <laughs> she plans to the point where she has grids. Each store that she wants to go to, what they have on sale, and she already has her Christmas list, so she's going off her Christmas list based on what people have on sale, and that's what she does. And she hits each store. Now, how many of y'all do that? <laughs> but, Gina, what time are you finished shopping on, on Black Friday? I'm okay. Enough said. So planning is important, and if you need help with planning and how to do it, or need some, talk to Gina, because Gina can plan. But back to, so how should we as Christians plan? First, the word tells us that we should seek advice 
or counsel. Proverbs 20.18 says, Make plans by seeking advice. And Proverbs 15.22 says, Plans fail for lack of counsel. But with many advisors, they succeed. So we need to plan. But who do we get seek advice from? Who do we go to? Not yourself. We may be wise, but we are not all that wise. Because the plans that we have in our head, half the time they don't make a whole bunch of sense anyway. And they what we want to do, and they're not what God wants us to do. But they're based on our little selfish little needs, and, and not needs, but wants. They're usually our wants. And God wants us to plan what we need. So who should we seek advice from? First and foremost, I heard you, Johnny. We should go to God for counsel and advice. He's the first person we should go to. How many of us jump up and say, okay, oh, I got an idea. I got a plan. And we just start moving forward. We don't ask God nothing. We don't get his blessings. We just do it. And then when things don't go right, we're, oh, well, okay. Oh, God, help me out. But we need to go to him first. We need to pray. We need to be in our word. And we need to fast. 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 When was the last time you fasted? I was convicted this morning when I said that. And God said, oh, now when was the last time you fasted? You could just start going fasting a little bit. And don't worry about your headaches and you having to eat on time. Half the time you don't eat when you're supposed to anyway. So don't use that as an excuse. You don't have no excuse. If I called you to fast, I will equip you to fast. And don't just have it one of those days where you know, because sometimes I'll go to like 1, 2, 3 o'clock and realize, oh, I haven't eaten anything. Don't call that a fast. <laughs> don't call that a fast. Because I can do that. Oh, I ain't eat. Oh, I was fasting. Okay. No, that's not a fast. That's you doing your, that's me, me doing my regular thing, just not eating what I'm supposed to. So we've counseled with God, we prayed, we went out of our word, we fasted, and we need to go to fellow believers. We don't, half the time, first, when we got a plan, who we go to? We go to our friend. And we all have unsaved friends. And they're usually the first ones we go to when we have a plan. Because, you know, we really want to do what we want to do. We, won't want, we don't want somebody who we know if we go to our fellow Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, they're going to say, girl, you know that ain't right. So won't you just stop it? And they'll take us to the Word and we'll be like, yeah, okay. So we don't go. But we need to go to our fellow believers for advice. And not just our friends. They can be an afterthought. But then... We need to go to professionals and experts. If I got a tax problem, what do I need to be doing going to a doctor about it? Doctor can't help me. Or if I have a legal problem. I should, if it's a criminal issue, I should go to a criminal attorney. I shouldn't go to a civil attorney because he may know contracts and things like that, but he doesn't know criminal law. That's not what he specialized in. Experts are masters in their field. They are the experts, and those are the people that we should go to. We're still on the first step, seeking advice and counsel. And then we should commit them to the Lord. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Commit to the Lord. That means we give them in trust to God. We give the plan for God to be in charge of. I don't know about y'all, but you know, sometimes I'll, you know how we give stuff to God and then we take it back because God not doing it how we want him to do it. Or we think there's a better way to do it. And we take it back and say, okay, and we run with our plan. But I may plan to go back there and ask Ashley what she's doing. 
And I say, okay, I'm just going to go on back there. But God knows before I get there, there's a hole. Now, if I just walk back there, I'm going to fall in the hole. But if I've given the plan to God and God's in charge of the plan, God's going to walk me around the hole. But no, sometimes we just like to go in and get into holes because, we, you know, we like climbing out of stuff. Some people think that's fun. I don't. But when we commit our plans to God, he will cause our thoughts, our thinking, what we want to do, to be in agreement to his will and his plans, which will be established and succeed. I've forgotten Petaluma Pastor reminded me, and Reggie ain't even here, so I could Pastor I could have did without saying it. But we need to remember Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. What does it say? So whatever God is planning, we may not see it, but it's in our best interest. It's not gonna harm us. It may look dangerous, but we're not going to be harmed. Remember last time I talked about the fire. Were the Hebrew boys harmed in the fire? No. So we need to commit our plans to the Lord. And then we need to follow God's direction. Proverbs 16.9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his step. It is God that directs our steps and makes them sure. So when we know we're not sure where we should be going, if we've given it to God, he's going to make sure you're taking the right step. You're going where you need to go. You're in connection with the right people you need to be connected with. The people you need to advise you are the right people in place that have your best interest at heart as well. We need to stop moving and doing things and our, on our own. We don't have, we, we are powerful, but we are powerless without God. Amen. So, okay. You got your little plan. Not a little plan. You have your plan. But then things start to happen. When you say, no, this, this is not what, this is not what I planned. This is not supposed to be happening. This is not what I signed up for. So let's turn, let's turn to our passage this morning. Proverbs 19.21. And it reads, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many plans are in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. In our plans, we often have a picture of how we want things to go or how we want them to work out. And when they don't happen the way we want them to happen or how we pictured it, we have a problem. I don't know about y'all, but I... You know, I get a vision. I get it set in my mind. This is how it's going to go down. This is how it's going to happen. And when it don't happen that way, I'll be like, Lord, what? come on now. We plan this. You know, I say we. Sometimes I consult. Sometimes I don't. When I don't consult, I can't say we. But when, we, when I do, it's like, Lord, look, we plan this. And I even say, you know, I know the plans you have for me. This is harming to me. What, what's, what's going on? And then I was reminded of the Israelites after they left Egypt. Now, you know, it took, it took a while for Moses to get Pharaoh to let the people go, but he let the people go, and the people left. God guided them. Cloud, cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, and led them towards the Red Sea. Well, when they get to the Red Sea, they camping out, everything cool. Okay, we gone. We t- they look up, and here come Pharaoh and his army. 
And they're like, Lord, why did you send us here to the desert to die? Moses, we told you to leave us alone. We were doing just fine. Why you leave us alone? Now you bringing us here to die. But what did God do? What did God do? But it's what they did not know was that before they even left, God directed the way that they should go. He took them on a longer route because he knew the shorter route, which was through the land of the Philistines, they would have had to go to war. And God knew they weren't ready for war. They were weak from, what, it was 430 years of enslavement? They were tired. How are you going to battle a fresh army? So God took them around. But we often, we get upset. We don't see the whole picture. God has it. So we get upset when things don't go the way we've envisioned them to go. And then so what do we start doing? We start fighting against the plan. Well, God, you know what? I ain't God, no, I ain't going to do that. I'll do this, but I ain't going to do that. We pick and choose what we want to. Or we try to change the plan. Well, God, you, you know, you don't, you ain't, you don't got this. I'm going to change this. This is how we're going to do this. You include them in it, this is how we're going to do it. Because you want them to help you. Because you know you need some help. God, this is how we're going to do it. And you change the plan. But what we fail to realize is that it's not our plan to begin with. It's God's plan. And it's God's purpose for us that prevails. Anything else we try to do, it's not going to happen. Successfully, we may do it. It's like, you know, going out to buy a car. You can go out. You can have a plan or not have a plan. I know Gina had a plan when she bought her car. But if you don't have a plan, you can go to the dealership, and they know people that ain't done their research, ain't de- had no counsel, ain't did no study, ain't nobody with them. They love to see women coming by themselves. And they get you signed up into everything, and by the end of the time, you walk out there with your new, brand new car, but you paid more for it than you should have, more for it than was in your budget for, but you got your new car, and you're looking good. But God knows all of that. That's why we should be in plan with him. And if we look at Isaiah 46, starting with verse 10, it says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey, from a far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that will I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. God has a plan for us. We can either be a part of the plan or not, because you know he can find somebody else to do it. It don't have to be you. Now, he can, only, he can only put up with us for so long. And then he just says, you know what, okay, you go over there and stay right over there where you are, and I'm going to go ahead and move over here with so-and-so. Because you want to do what you want to do, not what I have planned for you. So what, so, so what do we need to do with our planning and when our plans don't go our way? We need to realize that the plan is not ours, but it's God's. And we just read those passages from Isaiah. But then... Psalm 139.16 tells us, Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came about. Your life has been planned for you. All you have to do is step into it. Before you were even born. And it's not what doesn't just a fluke. It was written down. It was written down. And what we don't realize is sometimes we are a response to God's plan. We were bought here to fulfill a particular purpose that God had for us. And as Barbara, you like to say, it's not about you. It's about God. 
It's about God. But you have to do your part. We forget that. We say, oh, no, it's all about God. God got it. God go handle it. But God wants us to do some things. Not only does he want us to go to him and commit what we do to him, he wants us to follow him. What does the pastor say? Take up your cross daily and follow me? That's a lot of work. And if we spent more time following God, we wouldn't have to worry about all the other stuff that was going on. I remember, I can't remember who it was that came here that said, if we focused on what the Bible says to do, we wouldn't have time to notice all the things that it says don't do. That it says don't, don't do. But no, we want to know it. It says I can't do this, I can't do that. That's all we focus on. We don't like to look at it, what, it, what it tells us to do, what you can do. That's for you. Okay. And then we need to know that God, know that God knows you. Jeremiah 1, 5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God knows you. He knows you better than anybody else. I may like to think I know my children, but God knows them better than, better than I do. He knows your, all the interests, interests, no, can't say it, thank you, of what's going on inside of you and who you are, how you think, how you process it, what you're going to respond to, what you're not going to respond to. But most of all, God knows our strengths and weaknesses. And they're all a part of his plan. But we don't, we are a people that don't like to acknowledge our weaknesses. Because the world tells us it's not good to be weak. Oh, but God says something different. It's in our weaknesses that we are made strong. 2 Corinthians 12.9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. God can't do nothing to us when we, when we know what we're doing. And our strength. We got it. But it's when we weak that God steps in and uses us to accomplish what he wants to do. In our weaknesses that we depend on him. That power that's in the name of Jesus. That's when we need to call on it when we're feeling weak. But we're too ashamed to feel weak because the world's going to say, oh, no, she's weak. And it makes us feel vulnerable so we feel people going to attack us. But if we acknowledge to God that we are weak and he's given us power, there's nothing that anybody can do about it because we're under his protection. I'm one of those people. I don't like to be, I don't like to let people see me weak. I don't like to let people see me vulnerable. I like to, you know, have it all together. And God was saying, because, you know, I want to be an example for my children. You know, so I'm like, okay, I need to be strong. I need to see that I'm strong. I'm, you know, I'm in my word. I'm doing what God's. And he said, Annette, they need to see you weak. They need to see you crying out to me. Because if they something's, that when they're weak, they won't know how to cry out because they haven't seen you cry out. Don't cry out in your room. Cry out so they know that, that you're, you're crying out to me for help. They need to know who to go to for help. Besides coming to me. Because I'm going to turn around. <laughs> I'm going to turn around again. You know when your kid's in trouble who they go to. But just imagine. I bet that little boy on that video. I bet when he go. I, know, I bet he know who to go to for help. I bet he don't go to his mom and daddy first. I bet he goes to God and then goes to his mom and daddy. Those are the kind of children, those are the kind of examples we want to. So don't be afraid to be weak. It's okay. And then we need to remember that God is our resource. First Thessalonians 5.24 tells us that the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. So God doesn't just tell you or ask you to do things. He equips you to do them. He empowers you to do them. And with God's plan comes every resource you need to accomplish his plan. But we don't use his resources. 
because, you know, right again, we're strong. We got it all together. We, we know how we have the answers to everything. We know everything. Instead of saying, no, I don't know. Lord, direct me where I need to go to get the help I need. It's not that God can't miraculously, and it's done. No. That's what we're for for one another. The body of Christ. We are to work together. If I have need, I need a resource. Somebody in the body, using their gifts, has that resource. That's why it's so important to, to communicate and, use, and to, to be with one another. Like Mikhail says, to be a part of God's army, we need to go deeper in our relationships with one another. Sometimes we can't go deeper in our relationships because we don't love one another. But if we were loving one another, we, we were in deep relationship with one another, I wouldn't have to hide if I was going through something. I wouldn't be afraid to tell people what I was going through because of how they were going to judge me or not judge me. I would be, this is what I need. And God is saying I should share it with the body. And then those that have the resource, those that can help fulfill that need, they would be able to do it, doing their part. But no, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. We want to stick to ourselves and go through it by ourselves. But God can't use us that way. He wants the world to know that we are his disciples. And how do we do that? By the love that we show one another. Okay, y'all got I got off on my resources and wasn't what I was. And then if you if it doesn't come from outside, God gives us what we need. Inside, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So if you're in a situation where there ain't nobody there you can call on and you don't try to call people on the phone, you can't get to them, know that you can call on the power that is within you and you will have the strength that you need to get through it. Like I was standing, standing there that day, didn't know what I was going to do. Family was there, but they was all looking at me. But I knew. Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. He can give you what you need when you need it. I don't know why it's so hard for us to, to follow God's plan. We think that we don't think that he's punishing us, but we think that all that he requires of us is too much. But I thought about it. Well, would I want to go back to what and where I was before God? I mean, I'd like to believe God had a hand in my life before because he kept me out of some... Yeah, I'm lucky to be alive to get to Christ. I was foolish and reckless. But do you want to go back to that? Is he asking us to do anything that's going to harm us? That won't prosper us? That we won't grow? That we won't thrive? That we won't be the best that we can be? We're so busy looking at what we can't do and what's going on in the world. And well, so and so so-and-so balling, so-and-so rolling up in the bins, and so-and-so got new house, so-and-so got this, so-and-so always got her hair done, so-and-so always got her nails done. But sit down and talk to so-and-so. You find all the people you be looking at and say, oh, I wish I, you know, we be covenant. Yeah, we be covenant. Oh, I wish, yeah, that car, that's nice. Oh, yeah, look at her. Mm -hmm, doing a Sit down and talk to them, and you find out exactly how miserable they are. All that money, all those material things don't mean anything without Jesus. And then you can't take it with you. So it doesn't mean anything. So, folks, when you're planning, and we all, I'm quite sure some of y'all thinking of planning right now, 
Remember to first include Jesus in the plan. Consult with other people. And then follow God's direction. And then realize that it's not your plan. And know that God knows you. He knows your good, bad, and your ugly. Which is a part of his plan. And that's included in, and should be included in your plan. And he doesn't leave you alone. He gives you resources to accomplish what it is that he wants you to accomplish. Amen.